This week on the Computer Chronicles, cars and computers. In the market to buy a car? Take a look at the popular mechanics CD-ROM car guide. Need to fix your car? Check out AutoSite on the web. Like to race cars? We'll show you the need for speed. And if you like designing cars, take a look at Grand Prix Manager. Plus the latest in onboard navigation computers, Trans Am Performance Diagnostics, and computer-assisted car manufacturing. All this and Giles Online, this week's computer news and my pick of the week, coming up next on the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by Hewlett Packard Personal Computers, developing PCs for business. Additional funding provided by the Software Publishers Association. Presenters of the Codies, the annual Excellence in Software Awards. Hi, and welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe. Do you know that the average new car today has 40 microprocessors in it? Computers and cars are coming closer and closer together every day. On this show, we're going to look at different ways you can use your computer to buy, fix, design, and race automobiles. We're going to start with a terrific new CD-ROM that takes the guesswork out of buying a new car, and that's the popular Mechanics Car Guide, Joe. This is your product, you guys at Books That Work. Right. Uh, got that cute morphing uh, little effect going on there at the top. Right. That's All just right. a little entertainment for people. Right, I like started. the red one, so I want you to help me okay. go figure out how to buy a hot new sports car using sure. this. Sure. We, uh, we can go in and search for either a new car or used car. In this case, we'll start with a new car. Yeah, I want to buy a new car, and let's go to, can we pick sports cars? Sure. We'll click on style and class, and then say, let's choose either a... Either a convertible, uh, I'll, look, I'll consider a coupe, okay. Or a coupe with uh, two doors, of course. Probably, probably two doors. And then you can set any other parameter like price or make uh -huh. or features. Well, let's go to safety. I'd want to make sure the car has uh, airbags on both sides, for okay. example. So we can go in and say, the I want driver airbag, standard. Yeah, passenger airbag. Right. Okay. And click OK. So it's telling me it's found 20 cars that meet the criteria that you just specified. Okay, so there are 20 sports cars out there I could choose from. Right. So we'll click on View Car List, and now a list of the cars will come up that meet all the criteria you just specified. All right. Well, I've always had a soft spot for those Corvettes. So okay. let's look at a Corvette Coupe, see what that's going to cost me here. All right. We'll go into the, uh, the Corvette <coughs> here, and it, this is where all the information for the Corvette exists. Sp uh, specifications, you know, engine size, et cetera. This pricing and options button is probably the most important button in the product. So that would tell me if I want to add CD players and this feature and exactly. that feature, what extra it's going it to cost It has a me. whole list of standard equipment here as well as all of the options that are available for the car. So, uh -huh. you know, if you wanted a special uh, engine here that costs $1,450, you can plug that in Okay, there. now how about the bottom numbers? What does invoice cost versus retail price tell me? Well, retail price is what the sticker on the car, you know, you usually find in the dealership, uh -huh. whereas invoice cost is, is a as close as you can get to what the dealer paid so for So that's car. sort of my bargain room, I figure, between that 39 exactly. and the 33 You don't want to pay the 39 You want to pay closer to the 33 And can I look up the loan lease thing? I mean, is a better deal to buy or a better deal to lease? Sure. That would help me figure that out. We have a loan lease calculator that helps you go through and figure out what's the right option for you when you're buying this car. Okay. And I can look up articles from Popular Mechanics about the car. So that's right. All right. Now, next thing I want to know, I've got a car right now, which I might want to trade in. I want to know up front what it's worth before I take it to the guy and he tells me it's worth half of that. Sure. So I've got a 93 Honda Accord EX four-door. Could I just look in here and figure out sure. what it's worth? We'll go into the used car <laughs> section now and actually do a used car lookup. So we'll specify um, a certain year for your car, 1993. Right, 93 Honda. And we'll go uh, Honda here. And here are all the Accords that are listed. So you okay, have the EX. So, yeah, EX four-door sedan. Sedan. And we'll do view car profile. And now this will be the information that tells you, based on mileage, how much that yeah. car is worth today. Okay, so I could up the mileage, adjust it, et cetera. Sure, you know, if you had 55000 it would deduct yeah. a little bit. Well, that's not too bad. I think I might consider that deal. All right, one other quick point I want you to mention. There are also tips in here, too, right, like how to negotiate with a car dealer and right. stuff like that. And it comes with a web browser. So that's right. So with this software, you can go online and check up late information. That's right, the latest uh, pricing okay. information. Joe, thanks a lot. Sure. All right, now one way computers are making driving more fun is by replacing the old fold-up paper roadmap with new intelligent navigation systems. One of the most advanced new systems is being tested now right here in California. Even the most talented map reader can get lost on occasion, and every traveler needs a good hotel or restaurant at some point. 
Those are some of the uses for a new car navigation system being tested by the California State Automobile Association. The Nippon Denso device uses a combination of geopositioning satellites, a speed sensor, and a digital gyroscope to determine a vehicle's location to within 20 feet. Another technology that we use is called dead reckoning. Dead reckoning is the combination of an onboard electronic compass and a connection to the vehicle speed sensor. Using this information, we can track the actual movement of the vehicle, and the cursor on the map uh, will follow the direction of the vehicle as you're driving down the street. The system is more than an electronic map. It can guide the driver step by step with audio cues delivered in synthetic speech so that the driver can keep his eyes on the road. In half of a mile, right turn. I like the fact that it's hand holding that it tells you that you missed the exit. That's important for me because if I get distracted I'm talking or something while I'm driving, then I can look at the map, but also it'll tell me if I've missed something. In addition to maps, the navigator includes a database of AAA guides with recommended hotels, restaurants, and local attractions. The guide and map databases are stored on renewable media and can be downloaded from kiosks. A member will go into their CSAA branch office. They'll take their PCMCIA card from their Nippon Denso navigation unit, put it in the slot in the kiosk, request the area that they're going to, and it'll download the navigation database and the AAA travel information. It can either be an update of their current map database, or they can be requesting information for an area that they're going to be traveling to that's not currently on their navigation system. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Giles Bateman. So we've seen how computers can help you buy a car and help you find where you're going. Next, a look at how you can use a computer to fix your car, and Helga's going to help us with that. You guys run a website called the AutoSite. Give me a quick tour of what's in the AutoSite. Well, what we've done is built a site that will help people with a complete ownership cycle of their cars. We help them find a new car, help them make a good deal on it when they go to buy it, help them maintain it once they get it home, fix it if it breaks and then figure out how much it's worth when they go to sell it and buy a new one and start all over all right, again. I want to focus on fix it because that's my problem right now. All Show right. me how I would use AutoSight. I've got a car that when it's wet outside, not real good on starting. So how, okay. would, I, how would I look into that problem? So we go to the garage and we're going to go to the troubleshooting guide here where we Okay, basically starting problems would be my deal, huh? We'll take a look at starting problems and say, oh, there it goes. Well, engine won't we'll start, start when, when it is wet. wet. Exactly. So we'll Probably won't a start when it's wet inside, I think is the problem. <laughs> okay, go ahead. So we'll take a look here, and we have a list of probable causes. Uh -huh. Distributor cap, bad spark plug wires, and I can look a little further. We can take a look here and say, okay, well, the repair manual looks like a good place for so me. So could I go inside and actually see diagrams and stuff of how this all works? You can indeed. If you go in here, you can read about the ignition system, and this little camera tells you there's a picture here. Uh -huh. And we have... An illustration That's nice. of it's pretty fast too. It's pretty yeah. quick. Yep, we've we've we're just on a regular internet hookup here, yeah. and our okay. site's quite. Let's go quite back, fast. and I want to give you one more problem. Okay, All uh, right. my brother's car won't stop. Mine won't start. His won't stop. Okay, okay. so I want to look up braking so problems. So we want to take you a look that. Yeah. at the brakes here. Uh, yeah, brakes hardly stop the car or won't hold. That would be it. Now, now, what does this tell us? Now here we have some probable causes. Okay, could be brake fluid. So let's take a look and see if brake fluid is possibly the problem. We'll go again and see if we can find a picture that tells us a little bit about so how the brake. So we might figure out really what this master cylinder stuff looks like and where the fluid goes and That's so That's exactly right. We'll take a look here, and here we have a nice diagram mm -hmm. of how this all works. Now, you may not want to fix your car yourself, but at least when your mechanic tells you what he thinks is the problem, you'll know what yeah. he's talking about. Now, now, do you have sections on here where people can leave information and any bulletin board kind of stuff so that we can share information about, yeah, I had that problem with my car and I tried this? We do. We have a user survey, um, which people can send in their responses uh -huh. to. Um, and we're, we also have a help site where people can send us questions about any part of the site. That would be real helpful. Now, this is a very nice thing. How do you guys make money? I mean, you're just giving this thing away on the web. 
Well, we make money by selling reports on new and used cars, which are very complete, and they have just about everything you'd want to okay, know so about a new car. if I wanted to find out about that Corvette I was looking about before, I could actually go on here and buy a report from you. That's exactly All right. right. AutoSite on the web. Thanks a lot. Okay, one of the key roles computers are playing in the auto industry these days is in manufacturing cars, with tremendous competitive pressures on all automobile companies these days to make better cars at lower cost. Computer technology has become a key manufacturing ingredient. This auto assembly plant in Fremont, California, is a unique joint venture between Toyota and General Motors. New United Motor Manufacturing, or NUMI, produces about 220,000 cars and 150,000 trucks per year, and the factory's efficiency has made it the envy of many others. While the plant is not heavily automated, the team-based assembly line makes judicious use of computers from beginning to end. On any particular time, we have about 1,000 cars in production and about 700 trucks in production. And we need to monitor and track each and every vehicle. And we also need to monitor parts going into these vehicles on an ongoing basis. Just-in-time operation is definitely makes that even more challenging because as we run out of parts on the production floor, through computer systems, through our Kanban systems, we need to order those parts and we need to, in a real-time manner, bring those parts to the production line from our storage areas. Just-in-time manufacturing keeps inventory levels down, but requires a quick response when parts are needed along the line. Numi's parts call system feeds orders to the storage area, where a central terminal prints out the order for the next available forklift. Numi's Assembly Inspection Computer System, or AICS, is a Macintosh-based program that tracks each vehicle from start to finish. Through a touch screen, inspectors enter vehicle defects and repairs, which are then stored for warranty history. The system has become a kind of archive for pinpointing trouble spots. The quality system that I talked about earlier also helps us monitor history and uh, defect data for our vehicles. And uh, tracking that quality data, we use that information to prevent our problems on the production floor for future use. And that helps us move towards defect free operation. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Giles Bateman. One of the coolest uses of a computer is to simulate the experience of driving a race car at 200 miles an hour around some speed track. We're going to look at two new racing programs. The first one is the Need for Speed from Electronic Arts. Albert, that's your baby. Tell us about the program. Uh, this is a game that Electronic Arts developed in conjunction with Road and Track magazine. Uh, we actually took some Road and Track editors and our programmers up to a track in Canada and raced the cars around and modeled all the cars in the game after the real. So all the cars you drive here really act like the real car absolutely. would in terms of handling and steering and traction, that kind of stuff. Absolutely, absolutely. Right, now, what are the cars we have to choose from? Um, well, you got eight exotic cars, the Dodge Viper, the Ferrari 512, Lamborghini Diablo, Mazda RX-7, the Acura NSX, Super Turbo, Porsche 911 and the Corvette ZR1. A million bucks worth of cars in here to drive. Yep. Wreck them for 50 bucks. Okay. All right, now show us how you'd set up a race here, Albert. All right, well, I'm basically, I'm going to go in. I'm racing against the Ferrari, so that should be a pretty challenging race okay. uh, on a coastal so track. So it's you and the Viper against the Ferrari. That's it. All right. Let's get right in. All right, now before we start, now what, what's the stuff you're using here? We're not using a dumb little joystick, right? No, this is a Thrustmaster Formula T2 steering wheel okay, equipped so with you a got the whole bit. shift knob and, and under your feet. Down there. We have so brake you got gas and brake. Just like the real Never plane. use the brake. Nope, nope, not in this. <laughs> no okay. repercussions, so we're going full out. All right, so let's see. Now the object here is either to win or to have a great crash, right? Yeah, sometimes okay. a great crash is more fun. So one of the first things you really notice is the high level of detail in the game. They actually digitize the real cockpits of the car. So the interiors are real, not only the Absolutely. performance, the even the sounds. I even the sound. The, it's a real engine sound. They modeled the real horn sound. So you can really test drive these cars in like this, yeah. thing, right? You can find out how they handle. Sure. Each one handles differently. The the rear engine Porsches handles a lot differently than the front engine okay. Corvette. They're gonna do a good crash for us. Here? Uh, I'm gonna find you somebody. Find somebody I'm gonna here. take them head on. Oh, I just missed it. Oh, them. you missed it. That's no good. Let's switch to one of the. That's what every kid views. does, right? You don't want to win. You just want to get a good crash. 
just pass up the highway patrol 140 miles an hour. <laughs> You showed me before you got a radar detector in this. Yeah, area. there's a radar detector that. in yeah. the cockpit. You can hear it beeping. Okay. You have different views, right? Could you show us what? Well, this is the uh, kind of behind the car okay. chase view. There's an external helicopter view. It's hard to race, talk, press buttons all at the same time. And I just got busted by the cops. Oh, you got pulled over? I, I did. Bad. So that does happen. Though. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And you're only allowed to get pulled over twice. and. <laughs> It's the end of the race for you. So. All right, can we get, uh, what happens now? Can we get you back in and crash? Yeah, we're going to do a little. Come on, do some wheelies for us. We're going to do some peeling out. All right, even lays down the rubber there. You can see Absolutely. it on the road. Just like your hot rod in high school. Okay, now we're quick. i got about 30 seconds for you to really show me something cool. All I want right, that car so to fly, go. Albert. Okay. Straight on here. Yeah. Not too bad, not too Head bad. On. You did it. So much for you and the Viper. That's it. All right, thanks a lot. If you're really into auto racing and automotive design, we want to show you one more neat program. This is called Grand Prix Manager. It's from Spectrum Holobyte. All right, Anthony, you know, this is different from what we saw before. This is like the whole designing your car, building your car, and you don't actually race it, but you send it out to race based on your design stuff, right? Yes, sir. So let's go into the design section here on Grand Prix Manager and, and show us what the options are, what I can do. Okay, going with car externals and internals, you can choose a lot of okay, the various Okay, so we go to the externals, the and that means I can work on what? The exterior, any exterior part of the car, like the wings, the wheels, the side pods, so forth and so on. But okay, this is Formula One racing, so we got this you know, unique design here, right? Right. And, and show me the things I could adjust and play with. For example, with the wind tunnel, if you want to change the front dams, uh, the back dams here and the front dams there, it costs you $50,000. But once you get inside, you're actually able to lift and lower the back and front dam to keep you closer to the ground so your, turnings, your turning is much easier. For uh -huh. example, set into that rate and then turn the air tunnel on, and it will show you how the air will go over the car and over here at the top, it'll give you the max speed on corners and actual straightaways. So we can pre-test the thing before taking it out on the track in the wind tunnel if we want to spend the 50000 bucks doing it. That's why this is the business of racing. Go back and let's take a look at the internals to see what some of the options are there. Okay. So I can go back and like pick uh, gearboxes, transmissions, uh, suspension systems, all that stuff? Exactly. Uh, EMS, um, active suspension, center of gravity, the gear to ratio. Okay, so here's Just the second. internal design part. And again, can I test this stuff after I design the car, or I have to just put it out on the track? You have to put it on the track. The you internals, I have to really run it, right? It's not so simple. Steering system, electrical brakes, EMS, transmission, brake system, so forth and so on. Okay, gearbox, cooling system even, the whole bit, fuel tank, all that. And I see brake balancing, like if I play around with the brakes, how the thing's going to stop. Yeah. Right, usually it should be at 51 to 49 percent. Okay, so after I've designed my car, take me to, act to the actual racetrack now, so I can, you know, figure out the stuff, how much money I spend, where I get the investors, who I hire to drive the thing, all that sort of boring stuff. Okay. Actually design the car itself, and then send it out on the track with the driver I've, I've hired to, to drive exactly. the thing. Exactly. Basically, when you're going to that, you have to do the initial tests uh -huh. for qualifying races and all that stuff. We'll skip right past that. Okay. You can even pick the number of people that you want to come with you along to that part right there. But we're going to go right to the race in this one. Okay. And again, we should explain. I mean, this is a big program. And when we go to race, it's doing all the calculations for all the cars and all the variables we put inside the race exactly. here. So it takes a little Because we're not going to drive the car. We're going to watch it. And control it a little bit. You give no, it no, what do you mean control it a little bit? There's a little button on the racing screen where you can choose uh, the walkie-talkie to give your, your driver commands. Or oh, okay, the pit okay. So How many times go to the pit and that kind of stuff? Exactly. All right, so where are we now? Are we getting we're getting close? We're waiting for the names to come up with uh, the qualifying rounds, who goes in which position in the car. Okay. But, and then this is the pit crew that you can tell them what to do, how much gas to put in the car, wow. how many pits you want to pit after. So this really is Grand Prix manager. I mean, you got to figure out all these things. You're getting into the nitty-gritty, right. All right, so finally on the racetrack. And we've got the green light, and you'll see the track from up or view, and uh -huh. it'll give you the command guard beneath it to tell you okay, everything so you can do with do the it. race. I'm just waiting for it to click over. So we are racing against other cars now, computer-generated cars, or what? Every other car in the FIA. Wow, okay, so here's the course, and we, we just... Start off like that, and the cars all take off, and it's 71 track right, and 71 Wow, I just sit race. there and watch and see how well I did, exactly. and then go back to the drawing board. You got it. Okay, Grand Prix manager, thanks a lot. All right, so far we've looked at how amateurs like you and me can use a computer to buy, fix, or race a car. Professional drivers are also using PCs now to analyze performance and try and beat the competition. The sport of automobile racing dates to the turn of the century, and competitors have always relied on skillful drivers and talented engineers. 
but drivers at the Sears Point Raceway in California have added the personal computer to their stock of race tools, and it's given them a new kind of racing precision. The data acquisition gives you a little advantage because it's actually measuring what's happening on the car. The, the exact sensors and systems that we can use are regulated in part by the SCCA, the sanctioning body for racing that, that we race under. And we can use some more additional sensors when we're testing, but the, the specific things you can use on a race weekend measure uh, ride heights and suspension travel, throttle travel, steering inputs by the driver. This gives you a little more handle on what the driver is actually doing. The race car is equipped with sensors which read suspension travel, steering and throttle positions, and wheel speed. An infrared receiver measures lap times. The sensor data are stored in a standard PCMCIA card, which can be downloaded into a desktop computer. Drivers and designers can then compare speeds under different conditions and at different points along the track. It is a precise way to measure driver and vehicle performance, but not the only way. The driver's perceptions are equally as important because he can feel things that we can't measure, like is the ride harsh or is it smooth? Is the car easier to drive or is he really working hard to do what he's doing? Some of those things you can't really see on the screen. Apart from that, though, the drivers are just as curious as us to be able to accurately measure section times or is that faster in that turn or if I, if I go through there in third gear or fourth gear, which way was quicker? because he's, he's got a relative idea, but he's going really fast, he's working really hard, and it's easier for him to rely on us to tell him. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Giles Bateman. If you're looking for information about cars, the internet is full of stuff for every auto buff. Next up, our webmaster, Giles Bateman, takes us on a short tour of several websites for the car craze. Thanks, Stuart. You're absolutely right about there being a ton of car information on the net. What I'm going to show you today is just a tip of the iceberg. Let's start with DealerNet. This is the virtual showroom. Click on Index here, and you'll see that DealerNet will provide you with all sorts of information about shopping for a car online and uh, automobile-related services. I could click on uh, Dealers here, and then we could narrow down our search for an online dealer by clicking on the actual make of the car. You see a lot represented here. Now, next of all, if you are searching for a car, about to buy a car, you might want to check out Edmunds Automobile Buyer's Guides. Now, this is a lot of information, advice about how to buy a car. And um, click on Buyer's Advice. That gets us some more information over here. We're going to choose how to get your way at the auto dealer. And that has even uh, some sub-selections here. Let's start with the first one, how to prepare for your buy and trade-in. Uh, lots of good information here if you're planning to go buy a car at the dealership. And last but not least, if you're a classic car fanatic, you'll want to check out Car Catalog by their own admission, the world's largest catalog of collector classic and vintage motor cars. You can scroll down here, click on their motor car index, and get a list of all the classic car makers. Now, some of these are underlined. They have links. Others don't have links yet, but they will soon. Thanks, Giles. Now, time for our weekly summary of the latest news in the field of personal computing. Here's this week's Random Access. In the Random Access file this week, the cyber alliances dominate the news. Microsoft and America Online have reached an agreement whereby AOL will use the Microsoft Explorer as its web browser, and Microsoft will bundle AOL with Windows 95. Meanwhile, CompuServe and Netscape have announced that Netscape Navigator will now be available free of charge to all CompuServe users. Microsoft has announced an alliance with several regional and long-distance phone companies to provide ISDN software with Windows 95. Win95 users will also be able to directly access their phone company for information on ordering ISDN service. CompuServe says it has reached agreement with Vocal Tech Limited to allow CompuServe users to easily place long-distance phone calls over the Internet. The Internet phone software will be available for Windows and the Macintosh. And there's more. Intel and Microsoft have announced an agreement to create a new standard for combining video, voice, and data over one telephone line. This will make it easier for Internet users to use the net for long-distance phone calls and video conferencing. Globalink Incorporated has announced a new program that will automatically translate information on the World Wide Web from English into Spanish, French, and German, and vice versa. The software will cost about $50 and works with Windows and Netscape Navigator. 
Well, the latest numbers on the cyberspace explosion show that 7.5 million Americans now subscribe to online services and that more than 6 million say they use the World Wide Web. That number has quadrupled in the last six months. Finally, Apple has announced an upgrade for its operating system 7.5. The new updated version, called Update 2.0, increases system stability, adds new network communications and multimedia capability, and has more PowerPC native components. That's it for this week's Random Access. We'll send it back to you, Stuart. Now for my pick of the week. I'm going to show you something really cool. See this keyboard? Well, it's not just a keyboard. It has a built-in scanner. Watch this. I just take a letter I want to scan into my computer, just slip it into the keyboard, and instantly it starts to scan. Computer automatically launches the scanning software, and it takes just a couple of seconds, and my whole letter's been scanned into the computer. All right, up comes the paper port software now. It's converting the document I just scanned in, and there it is already. I'll show you in the full page view over here. There's the document I just scanned in. Pretty darn good copy there. What is really nice about this is the software that comes with it. If we go back to the desktop view, I'll show you. You can scan all kinds of things in here. Letters, business cards, receipts, uh, recipes, uh, fancy documents, pictures, and the software organizes it for you. This is the absolute easiest and most user-friendly way to scan stuff into your computer. Not only is the scanner cool, but it comes with a very friendly paper port software that helps you easily organize the documents that are scanned into your computer. Also, it comes with OCR capability, so you can import these documents into other files. The scanner keyboard is from Compaq. It's a brilliant piece of hardware and software engineering. That's it for this week's Computer Chronicles. We'll be back here again next week with more on the latest in personal computers. I'm Stuart Chaffee. We'll see you here next time.